Hi everyone, it's David Wheeler at Wickham Wanderers and you're listening to The Wickham Wanderers Show. Welcome to a brand new series of The Wickham Wanderers Show, Series 5. I know, where's the time gone? I remember Series 1. Anyway, uh, coming up in the first hour, well, the only hour to be honest, uh, in the next 60 minutes we'll be looking ahead uh, to the trip to Wrexham, which is on Saturday, 5.30 kickoff, a bit different. Uh, we'll be hearing from the manager uh, in a few moments' time. We'll catch up with Phil as well. New club captain Jack Grimmer will catch up with him as well. Also, from a brilliant trip to the new Harlington training base this week, uh, we'll hear from uh, one of the new signings, Dan Udo, a January transfer uh, deal arrival with Matt Butcher and uh, also turning our attention to Wickham Wanderers women as they uh, continue their season preparations which is uh, early September for them uh, we'll hear from Captain uh, Bobby Lynch as well lots to bring you uh, in this edition of the Wickham Wanderers show very much looking forward uh, to bringing that to you and very excited for the new season as well lots of club news uh, to share with you as well but first uh, let's uh, bring you a chat with Phil uh, who uh, for context was at uh, Adams Park when we caught up with him Listen out for the bird scarer. But as you can imagine, uh, lots to look forward to this season and uh, feel very much excited as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think pre-season has been very much that kind of start of a new era for Wickham Wanderers with the new ownership group coming in uh, pretty much as the last season finished into the into the pre-season. So, yeah, lots of new things, lots of developments, uh, lots of change. But yeah, it does have that kind of exciting dawning of a new era feel to it. Um, you know, the messaging has been very consistent as well about... You know, these are long-term plans that are being put in, which I think from the fans I've been speaking to as well have found sort of reassuring to sort of underline that excitement as well because, you know, longer-term plans mean, you know, strategic planning, uh, long-term future. So things like the academy, uh, the new training ground, etc. cetera, uh, these are things that take time, but, um, you know, will bring uh, hopefully fantastic benefits. But it's not an overnight change, of course, but we're looking on the pitch at a team that finished the second half of the season incredibly strongly. I think the second half of the season uh, was playoff form over quite a large group of games. We've seen additions into the squad that have been made earlier in the transfer window than, than we're perhaps used to in recent years at Wickham Wanderers. So that brings a level of excitement as well uh, and hopefully uh, a, a, a different approach during pre-season, an easier approach to assimilate them into the, into the team as we hit into game time. And then, yeah, when the fixtures came out, first one up, everyone was looking for when Wrexham was going to be and it just so happened to be the first one the media attention that they have surrounding them we all know about and I think in terms of you know talking to like American broadcasters this week who are are broadcasting that game live across North America you know it's very much their party Wrexham League One in in North America so uh, it's kind of set for Wickham Wanderers to be a bit of a party pooper on Saturday um, which suits us down to the ground. So what's been your feeling on how the pre-season games have gone? Because there have been some pretty decent performances against you know, championship opposition in some cases as well. Yeah, look, pre-season is it's kind of a dual, dual approach, isn't it? It's about getting the players fit and, and getting them match ready and, and getting, uh, getting themselves mentally and physically ready for the rigours of a league campaign. Um, so it's not a results business, but obviously everyone around football clubs are so, are so competitive by their nature, so people will look into the results. But you know, in terms of performances, I thought the the home game against Watford was a superb game to watch. Uh, pre-season friendlies aren't always uh, as entertaining as that. Uh, it was played with a sort of a ferocious intensity that of a cup tie. Um, which I think the crowd really enjoyed. And I think the players did as well on both sets of teams because it kind of really does ground you for the blood and thunder of the league. There's a lot of the games that have gone on behind closed doors, not all of them that I've seen as well. And it's about getting the whole squad fit. 
Um, so, yes, players and, and, and fans alike will be looking into the team selections, trying to read the mind of the manager and work out what that starting eleven will be come 5 or 4.30 when the team gets announced on Saturday at Wrexham. But in terms of how pre-season's gone, I think it's been excellent. There's no huge injury list. Uh, you know, we know Brandon Hanlon's coming back from a long-term injury and, and that's progressing very well. Um, Sam Vokes has had a, a small knock that, um, that he picked up very early in pre-season. But other than that, it's been um, it's been decent, I think, in terms of the preparation. And I think Harlington has helped with that uh, massively as well with the pitches there. Um, so I think the manager's job is somewhat easier than it was 12 months ago. You mentioned the, the behind closed doors games. Do you do you think that the, the manager and his, his backroom staff and also the players as well get just as much from those as as the other matches as well, or perhaps more in some cases? Well, I think, it, like I say, it's it's a dual approach, isn't it? It's about the fitness and it's about getting um, those messages across. Uh, that's potentially easier in a in a in a sort of sanitised environment of the training ground in terms of there's no crowd noise and there's things like that um you're able to play sort of different length games so uh one of the pre-season games i did see was a was a 45 minute um uh, half followed by a small break into a 15 minute half followed by a break into a 45 minutes and a, and a 15 minutes so you know unusual um time frames but again these are to add minutes and build people's minutes up um, gradually um, as well so you know those behind closed door games allow for that flexibility allow for that um, those minutes to be built up um, so yeah in, you know chatting to the gaffer during pre-season you know he's revealed there's no exact science to how you build uh, that fitness and, and mental fitness for for the season uh, everyone does it differently and it's about sort of making sure they're not just ready for the 5.30 kickoff against Wrexham but they're ready for the rigours of a season which you know is nearly 10 months long um, so the foundations they put in now are absolutely vital so um, yeah I think those behind closed doors games are, are very useful I know fans can find them annoying a bit because they would like to see absolutely everything uh, that goes on but hopefully their appetite has been whetted by that Watford game and, and Swindon away for those that travel too uh, and they will hopefully see the fruits of all the labour uh, at Wrexham on Saturday and you mentioned Harlington. I was fortunate enough to be at a, a media day at the training ground this week as well. And it really does look like a fantastic facility and also has great potential to be to be excellent as well. Yeah, I think that the, the, the P word is important here, the potential, um, because it's a, it's a huge site. Um, you know, with the academy plans that Wickham Wanderers have now, they needed to have that extra space. Uh, they needed better facilities, certainly pitch-wise, for the first team uh, in terms of for them to grow and, and, and continue on the arc that they are. Um, so I think it um, it was certainly um, appealing for many, many reasons. Um, obviously, there's a lot of work that's going in uh, and continuing to do so and will do so. Uh, the new pitch that's being put in, uh, pitch one for the, for, the, for the first team squad, um, will be ready in September. Uh, that's been a, a sort of a rapid turnaround as well. But I think that that will be a, an excellent addition uh, to Harlington as well, with, with more to come. Uh, and then this is before we've really sort of started to see um, the first shoots of the academy coming through. There's lots of um, hard work going on in that area as well and, and stuff that will be coming clear um, this week. And and we'll start to see those first steps being made. Again, that's another long journey, but um, the, the steps are being made. And I know fans are very excited uh, to see the areas of growth in, in that particular area as well. A lot of fans were very strongly at the fact that Wickham Wanderers don't have an academy or haven't had an academy uh, for some time now. Uh, the B team has been doing its senior development squad uh, but now we're looking to formalise that and move it onwards. I supporters will be really looking forward to seeing the, the new signings on the pitch as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly that and we've had time to get to know them. The, the, more importantly, the players have had time to get to know each other. Um, so yeah, I think there's been some really good um, shrewd additions to, to what was a squad that, as I said earlier on, finished the season really strongly. Um, so it wasn't really about sort of huge scale change. Um, and I think the players that we've added in have, have, have been excellent in terms of what we've needed. Uh, they're great characters as well. And uh, and like I said, they've had pre-season to, to bed in and, and get themselves settled. And hopefully we see the, hopefully we see the results of that on the pitch in the, in the coming months. Um, the window's still open. Um, I think with the Euros, uh, we've heard that you know, the younger players that perhaps will be looking for loans coming from Premier League and, and bigger teams, uh, that's slightly sort of on the delay because of uh, of uh, 
of international players coming back later because of the Euros. So those younger players are perhaps involved in the first team squads of their respective clubs. So no doubt there will be lots of business being done across League One. Um, uh, and we can, apart from Nathan Bishop, haven't knock it yet. Um, so there's a few more weeks to go. So we shall see what happens. And we'll hear from the manager later on in the show, but one of the things we, we spoke about on the on the day when we came down was a, a bit about obviously how injuries were such an issue last season, but he gets the real sense that that might not be such a concern this term due to the, the, the pre-season that they've had. Yeah, yeah, like I said earlier on, you know, looking at the injury, injury list and touching wood here, uh, there doesn't seem to be uh, the numbers that were involved on that list uh, this time last year, which from a management point of view, is exactly what you want because those fixtures come thick and fast when, when the kickoff comes on Saturday. We've got a cup game on the Tuesday, back in league action against Birmingham at home the following Saturday. Uh, and it's the EFL Trophy the following Tuesday. So um, we talked about getting the whole squad fit and, and that's why because I think the whole squad will be seeing them in, in competitive action across uh, the first two, three weeks of this season. And quite a bit of travelling for yourself, of course. Well, you know, that's part and parcel of the job. And, you know, I've not been to Wrexham. It's a tick-off for me. Um, so, obviously, looking forward to going there. It'll be a sellout too. So, lucky to be in the ground. So, I uh, feel privileged about that. Um, but, yeah, so um, lots of travel for me. Um, but that's uh, that goes with the territory. And is there much you're looking forward to seeing yourself in terms of things you'll be looking for on the pitch? Because I guess, it, uh, speaking to uh, Jack there, new, new club captain uh, as well, it, it, it feels like the end of the season came at, at the wrong time, really, and they just wanted to kind of carry on from where they left off. Yeah, yeah, it, it did sort of. It was a bit of bittersweet, wasn't it? Everyone was tired at the end of a long campaign and, and, and looking forward to a break, me, me included. And um, But when when you are in good form, you do want to keep rolling that on. Um, but I think, you know, Jack is been a very shrewd appointment as, as club captain. He's a senior pro, longest serving player now at the club. Uh, filling big, there's the bird scare, filling big shoes from <laughs> Joe Jacobson. Um, so, you know, he's got, uh, I think he's got a, a very wise head on his shoulders, uh, Jack Grimmer. And um, I think part of his job now is to make sure that we have that momentum continuing from last season um, as well. And that's no easy task because there's been a huge amount of change in terms of the training ground and all the other bits, uh, new faces as well. But um, So that's that'll be one of the things that Jack will be looking to help integrate with the squad, you know, along with his other senior players and the younger players as well. Very much a team effort. Um, but that's one of the things that he'll be looking to, to continue. And Matt Bloomfield wants to put together a team that, that fans can be proud of and enjoy watching. But I think supporters as well will, will especially want him to do well as well. Of course, no one at Wickham Wanderers uh, um, gets more support than, than Matt Bloomfield, and quite rightly so, because of you know the huge amount of time he's been at this club and his love for the club, uh, which is evident in, in how he speaks and how he reacts uh, during those spells. Uh, so, look, you know, he, he had a tough time last season uh, in terms of results during the middle of the season. Um, he came through that as, as a young manager. We've seen this before with Gareth Fainsworth and um, the second half of the season with the backing of, of the then owners, the Koo Higgs, uh, he really delivered. So it's a, it's a story that young managers have, you know, and time is the the rarest commodity of football. Um, and, you know, the season finished superbly well. And we look forward to continuing to grow on Matt's journey with us as, as well at the exciting time of the new owners coming in for the new era of Wickham Wanderers. I was going to say, it'll be great to see what unfolds in that regard as well with the infrastructure that's been put in place with uh, you know, real solid foundations for the future of the club. Yeah, exciting times really, Colin. And, and that, I think that's the message really. Is, you know, it's the start of a new journey, exciting times. Um, it's a long journey, but you know, a journey's got to start somewhere. And uh, it looks like where we're heading is uh, going to be very exciting indeed, both on and off the pitch. Uh, starting, of course, with Wrexham uh, this weekend. Exactly that. And how about this for a run of fixtures? Wrexham, Birmingham, Rotherham. First three league fixtures, three of the much fancy teams with uh, two of which have got uh, substantially large budgets. But as Wickham have proven down the years, um, football isn't played on the balance sheets. Um, but it's the first three games. It's a long season. So we don't know what will happen in this first month, which is a, which is a tough month. Uh, tough month of fixtures we don't know what will happen in this month but um, there's a long way to go and hopefully we start well and we'll see what happens very much looking forward to, to getting your thoughts uh, throughout the throughout the season uh, thank you so much for your time cheers Colin great chatting to Phil uh, at Adams Park of course and uh, excellent timing with the the uh, uh, the contribution of the bird scare three shots it, it might have sounded like the lane and shooting club uh, perhaps uh, people practicing to get in the get in the in the sights of uh, amber rather uh, topical uh, who won silver and trains there as well anyway 
uh, diverted slightly. Uh, you'll hear Phil again on Saturday, providing live commentary both on Wanderers TV and here on Wickham Sound on FM uh, from 5 through until 5.30 uh, online as well. You'll get uh, a match build-up to kick off at Wrexham at 5.30, which you'll hear live here on 106.6 and online. Uh, Luke will keep you up to date with events there. And there's also a uh, post-match reaction from 7.30 through until 8.00. Uh, on Wickham Sound as well. So make sure you don't miss that. Uh, that's on Saturday evening, which is uh, it's very different for football, isn't it? <laughs> I can't remember an occasion at all, in fact, where we've had uh, football on a Saturday evening. Phil mentioned in passing uh, the Academy, uh, breaking news from earlier this week, yesterday, in fact, I think, or if you're listening online uh, to the podcast ages ago, uh, the <laughs> uh, announcement that uh, Jeremy Sauer has been appointed as the club's first Academy director. He starts on the 19th of this month or again if you're listening on the podcast some time ago uh, he joins the club with a wealth of experience and expertise in academy football having previously held positions with uh, the Premier League as academy support manager he's also worked at West Ham uh, and as an assistant academy manager and with Wimbledon as well AFC Wimbledon uh, playing an instrumental role in the building of the academy as academy manager there he's uh, joining the chairboys uh, at their Harlington training base from Brighton uh, where he's worked most recently as academy manager uh, for the women and girls department Dan Rice, who you may well know, is the Chief Football Officer and Interim Chairman at Wickham. So Jeremy's appointment underlines and demonstrates the owner's commitment to building a foundation which will deliver the club's long-term ambitions. Mentioned in the chat with Phil as well, I was fortunate enough to go to a media day at the new Harlington training base on Tuesday. Got to speak to uh, a number of um, key personnel there, including the new club captain, uh, Jack Grimmer, who, as you can imagine, is uh, looking for, to forward to the season, but especially so as uh, being given the armband on a permanent basis and as club captain as well. Uh, absolutely, yeah. It is. You've hit the nail on the head there. I'm looking forward to the season, but to be captain adds that sort of extra dimension of how special the season feels. And, you know, it's a clear highlight for myself, and, you know, especially to lead. The players that I know we have in this changing room and the squad that we have is, is a great feeling. And it feels like there's a real mix of youth and experience throughout the squad now. It is, yeah. There's, um, you know, I think it was always happening with the development squad. When you implemented the development squad, I feel like the whole club got this influx of freshness and, and youthfulness, you know what I mean, which was brilliant. So it was... Um, so we do have a great mix just now. Saying that, we do have you know great experience that is extremely needed. Uh, I will say during tough points of the season, you know you rely on that quite a lot. But you know the blend is there. The gaffers went out with it with the new owners and got the right blend. And you know hopefully we can show how just how strong a position we are in the first few games of the season. And how easy have the, the new faces integrated as well? Extremely easy, to be honest. I think there's a good few of them that you feel as if have been here for longer than six weeks. Uh, I think the gaffer and, and the owners did really well in going out and getting them in early so that you know the first few weeks of pre-season we had the bulk of our team together. Uh, we also were lucky enough that we went away as a club for a week to Loughborough, which again helps really settle in players. Uh, and I think it's just down to the due diligence of the gaffer that does his homework and they know the, 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 the right kind of characters and, and they have, they've, they've fitted in very seamlessly. And going into the new season, is there a real feeling of being able to build on what was achieved at the end of the last campaign? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think it's, you know, there's been a lot going on behind the scenes that, you know, the fans probably won't have seen. But, you know, there's been massive changes already and there's only going to be more. So I think, you know, to improve on anything to, to improve on last season would be a big achievement. Um, you know, we are a, a club that now has, I think, a very solid foundation that's been put in place, which is important, you know, for the... Especially for the fans, I think the players will come and go, but the, the fans will be here long after us. And I think the club now has that building blocks in place um, for years to come, hopefully. And, you know, I think it's going to be slow progression, but progression nonetheless. And, you know, I think after last season, yeah, we're, we're definitely looking to build on that. And how easy has it been to adjust to a new new training base and obviously new owners of the club as well and, and lots to look forward to for the new season? It is, yeah. It's been it's incredibly busy, to be honest. It's been a lot going on um, on and off the pitch. Now now I think I'm, we're all at the stage just looking forward to the season to begin and to kind of get running with it and, and to get the games flowing. But, but you know, there's the people at Wickham have, in the club have worked so hard behind the scenes, you know, with the training ground and the transitioning of the owners and everything else. And, you know, the, the shout-out goes to them because they've 
try to make it as seamless for us players as possible. But but yeah, we, we are under no illusion that there's been you know a lot of hard work going on, and we are very fortunate that the club are now in, in a different position, and you know hopefully that can have a, a positive effect on us on the pitch. And after the pre-season, I'm really excited to, to actually get going on Saturday at Wrexham. For sure, yeah, it's a great game to kick off the new season. I think it shows the strength of the league this year. I think I've, I've never, ever seen the league this strong in, in all my years in England. You know, you've got teams coming down that spend a lot of money, but you also have teams coming up that want to spend a lot of money as well. And I think it's it just adds to the probably the excitement of for the neutral and for the fans that that the league is so strong, you know, there's so, there's so many ex-Premier League teams in the league now. So it's going to be an exciting league and, and like you say, no better, probably no better place to start on Saturday. And, you know, as long as we can go up there and, you know, not think about the hype too much and do our own thing and try and go about our own business and um, hopefully we can have a successful day. I wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Thank you, mate. Thanks, Top man. Sir. Top man. Real pleasure catching up with uh, Captain Jack. And we'll be speaking to him, of course, throughout the season, uh, which, uh, as you well know, uh, kicks off on Saturday. 5.30 away to Wrexham. We must pause and uh, echo the club's uh, deepest condolences and send sympathies to the friends and family of Aaron Locke, here, a season ticket holder who passed away last week at the age of just 28. Uh, as a supporter, he was uh, very well known with other fans as well, travelling across the country to follow the club over the past few years he's a very popular figure uh, with fans as well and uh, the club say that they've made contact with Aaron's family to express their love and support for everyone uh, at Adams Park and we're making arrangements to pay tribute to Aaron at the forthcoming game against Rotherham at Adams Park on Saturday the 24th and there are uh, other commemorations uh, arranged uh, after the game at the Flint Cottage as well and also uh, a group of supporters are uh, requesting that on Saturday's game on the 29th minute there's a minute's applause in Aaron's memory as well so uh, again uh, sending our condolences and support to uh, friends and family of Aaron Lockyer uh, also uh, we had the news that the uh, Wickham Wanderers ex-players association's uh, oldest uh, member uh, has sadly passed away as well uh, some uh, news uh, sadly uh, coming uh, to us uh, in recent times as well if you were uh, a follower of the club uh, of the show as well uh, you'll know that uh, we regularly speak to uh, members of the Wickham Wanderers ex-players association and uh, it was on uh, just short of his 97th birthday that uh, Johnny Brooks uh, passed away as well so uh, we, we uh, uh, again uh, send our condolences and we'll be uh, um, sort of featuring his uh, memory and uh, talking about him more uh, in future episodes of the show. We'll be hearing from the Wickham Wanderers X Player Association from next week and throughout the season here on Wickham Sound. Across High Wickham and South Buckinghamshire and on your smart speaker. Play Wickham Sound. This is Wickham Sound. The Wickham Wanderers Show, Thursdays from 7. Part two of this week's Wickham Wanderer show still to come uh, and not necessarily in this order uh, we'll hear from manager Matt Bloomfield new signing Dan Udo and Matt Butcher as well uh, we'll be giving you more club news and looking ahead to the big kickoff on Saturday away to Wrexham 5.30 you know I'm sure you know uh, lots more to bring you as well including a look ahead as to what's to come in previous edition in previous edition um, <laughs> future editions that makes more sense uh, of this show as well including some guests coming up in the current uh, coming weeks uh, including next week as well we'll be featuring the Wickham Wanderers Foundation throughout the uh, coming season and also Wickham Wanderers women as well who now come under the umbrella of the foundation and we'll be speaking to a number of their players throughout the campaign kicking off this week though as they continue their build up to the start of their season in early September uh, Captain Bobby Lynch who uh, has popped into the studio to chat to us about uh, some of the changes that she's seen as she starts her fifth season with the Chair Girls. There's a couple of us now who are five seasons and we um, Emma Newby yesterday announced her tenth season. So she's been around a lot longer than me, seen a lot more change than me. But yeah, in the last five years, the growth of the club, I think, and the connections and obviously now joining the foundation has grown massively. So yeah, lots of positive changes, I would say. Does it feel like an especially exciting time with the, the new signings that you made towards the, the back end of last season and you know what, what can be achieved this season as well? Yeah, I mean, it's brilliant. I think we announced uh, the signing of Jess, um, who's another like 
really good addition for us, as well as um, Imani, who joined us halfway through the season, Axel, um, all of those guys, and as well as some new signings who I don't think have been announced yet. You know, so all in all, we've really grown and pushing in the right direction. Yeah, and I think it's going to be an exciting season for us. It really feels like getting the opportunity to speak to you know so many of the, the players in the, in the previous season as well. Such a real kind of family feel throughout the, the whole squad as well, not just the, the first team, but the, the under-23s and the, the under-18s as well. Yeah, I mean, it's good. We tr- all train together, so it's like a good opportunity for the younger players coming through. We've had, throughout pre-season now, we've had a couple of the girls come up um, from the 18s and the development squad, or 23s. And yeah, so it's good. You get to meet everyone, you get to know everyone. So yeah, there's 60 of us, and you know, when the, when trading's full, there's it's about 60 girls down. So yeah, yeah, it's really it's really good. Is that really pleasing for senior players such as yourself to really see others, you know, develop and, and, and gain in confidence and improve their game? Yeah, definitely. And I think it's massive. Last season, I was with the 18s, and some of those girls now have stepped up to the development team, and you see a real change in their like leadership and their just growth in them as human beings and um, it's mad yeah you get to watch them sort of grow up and develop and I sound like a bit of a mum now but it yeah it is a really good thing to see and do you notice your own development of your own game as well yeah I mean I have to do things differently I'm getting on now <laughs> so I have to manage the game in different ways than I used to and I'm playing against all these quick players and have to change my style a bit to, to manage that because I'm not as quick as I used to be but yeah I do I do notice a difference and I think uh, for me of being one of the senior players, I think I'm the second oldest now, maybe. Yeah, yeah, it comes by really fast as well. So <laughs> I, I used to be one of the youngest ones, and it feels like only like yesterday, you know. And now I'm one of the oldest ones. So yeah, you do have to change change the way you are a bit, but you know, yeah, I'll make it make it work. And especially, does it feel like since you had your, your injury? Because I remember speaking to you, and obviously you weren't playing for such a long time. And, and does it feel like you know since coming back from that, you, you're kind of a stronger uh, player, I guess? And obviously, you've had that experience as well. Yeah, I've been lucky that my injury didn't affect me too much psychologically. As soon as I started playing again, I was, you know, slide tackling, I was doing all this stuff and just not thinking about it, which is a really hard part of the, the coming back from an ACL, especially, I think, any injury. But coming back from an ACL injury, I think that can be a real big factor. But for me, I was quite, because I just get into the zone, I didn't even think about it. I was making slide tackles without even noticing. And my strength and conditioning coach and my rehab guy was like, oh, these are some strong tackles, like what injury? And I was like, oh, I did, like, I didn't even cross my mind. Um, but I feel like this season, this pre-season now, we're about five games in and I've, I feel like I'm fitter. I think last season I needed to just get back into it. Obviously played, I think, every game last season, minus one. But this season now I feel like I'm actually back fit. I think it took me last season to sort of get back into it properly. And being the captain as well, does, does that leadership role seem, feel really natural to you? Yeah, I think last season when we lost Cara, I think it was a sort of a natural step up for me. And um, this season then, it just feels, yeah, again, like a sort of natural step, being one of the oldest ones. I've got another couple of the girls, you know, are in this sort of leadership group with me and they really help. Um, but, yeah, I think it was sort of a natural, natural decision. It's a big sort of responsibility, isn't it? And obviously, what's really nice is that the younger players obviously really kind of look up to you as well and, and can learn from your, your experience. Yeah, and I think they asked me to be club captain towards the end of last season. I think that adds a bit of an extra responsibility. And I think I naturally look after sort of the younger ones and, and I enjoy seeing them them develop. So I think it is for me, obviously it, it's in line with my job role and everything at work. So, you know, the, watching the younger ones and working with the younger ones to sort of develop and build their confidence is sort of like what I do in a daily basis anyway. So I'm um, in my day job. So, yeah, it goes in hand with each other I suppose and I guess you don't really get a chance to, to reflect but it's really nice to kind of step back I guess and see sort of how far you've come as well just in terms of how, how you first started with your interest in the game as well yeah it's it's massive I always think that and I but I almost think I wish I was you know sort of 10 years younger and then I would be growing up with all of this and, and you know and having more opportunities because of where the game is now the positives of it is that it's the next generation are going to get the get the reward of women's the growth of women's football but yeah for me it's sort of coming at the end of my career so yeah it's a bit bit bittersweet I'd say so when you were younger I don't want to make you sound too old but when you were younger did, <laughs> did you did you find the opportunities were, were quite tricky or did you find it quite were you playing football at an early age with just boys or were you able to play with with girls as well I actually started playing football quite late I didn't start playing football till I was about 12 and I know lots of other girls play from you know five six seven and I only started playing because of my PE teacher at school because she played for Reading so then she was like you should come and play for the younger ones so I tried and I did um, 
yeah, I do notice um, notice the difference in just the growth of the game. Where for me, I played there wasn't many girls playing. I think I played in year seven. We had to have a team from year 11s to year sevens just to field a team. So I, at year seven, you know, I was playing with the the older girls. But whereas now, you could probably field a team in every year group, and it's yeah, it's it is great for the for the sport. But yeah, the, it's definitely different from when I was growing up. Have you noticed a real change in perception, obviously, of women's football, especially, I guess, since the, the England team and obviously the, the WSL has become so much more prominent as well? Yeah, and I think it's sort of there's an acceptance of women's football for what it is rather than a comparison to men's football, which I always say is very important. Like, no one is claiming that women's football is the same as men's football, but if you take it for what it is, it's very entertaining. Um, and it is a very close game in the WSL. There's lots of exciting games. And in our league, there's lots of exciting games, you know? So it's the same. It's levels, isn't it? So, but um, yeah, I think women's football now is a lot more accepted. It's a lot more, there's a lot more opportunities and it's a lot more followed, which is great. What was it like finding your own sort of position on the pitch where you thought, oh, this is, this is where I'm, I'm best? I don't think I've done that yet. <laughs> no, I mean, last season I played in, I think, pretty much every position. Even as a goalkeeper at the end of last season, had to step in because of an illness. But uh, I, I will literally play anywhere. I will play wherever I am needed to go. And I think I can somewhat do it okay. <laughs> do you have a preference? Do you have a favourite? I don't know, you know. I've, I've been playing centre-back in pre-season. I played centre-back for the sort of end of last season which I can enjoy because I do like defending, but I also do like going forward. But I don't know. I'll say centre-back just because that's where I'm playing now. I guess that's a good position as a captain as well, isn't it? Because you can get a good kind of feel for the, the, pit, the rest of the pitch from there. Yeah, and I can see everything and talk to everyone from there. I think the girls will tell you I do not stop shouting for 90 minutes and whether it's repeating the same thing over and over again or just saying something, it's sort of my style. And I do like to call the back line, I suppose, as well. I like... Um, controlling that so yeah there is it is a good position yeah so what would you say are the main strength of the team going into the new season I think our creativity going forward we've signed you know we've got Imani we've got Jess and everyone else who's at the top say Leachy add a lot of creativity and speed to our attack which is you know always good to watch um, from from centre back you can sort of give them the ball and watch them do their thing which is great um, and I just think we've got a solid team now. I think we've grown, we've developed over the last couple of seasons. We've retained a lot of our core players and added, you know, great additions into that as well. We had a couple of left um, for different reasons, you know, uni and going to uni and moving back from uni. I think Kine went back to Norway. So yeah, we've kept a solid foundation that we've developed over the last few years, and I think we're all sort of now know the expectations and know our job roles and all of that stuff to to really push on. And you get a real sense of resilience as well, because there are a few games, I think last season, where you went you know, a number of goals down, but just came back and, and just sort of kept, which isn't ideal, I guess, in, in, <laughs> in, in a game situation, but you'd rather be getting a few goals up. But, but to come back from that and to, to show that sort of fight and togetherness. Yeah, it's one of those things, I think it's a bit like England men need a bit of a kick up the bum um, to get going, which is not ideal and is something we will work on because we don't want to keep going down before we start then scoring. Uh, but yeah, we, we can. So that's the positives of it, is that we can come back from um, conceding goals, which is something we struggled with in the previous season before last, I think. So, yeah, it's all, it's all a good step in the right direction. <laughs> and obviously, from, from your experience, you've probably learnt a lot about the, the opposition that you're likely to face in, you know, this coming season and, and sort of their strengths and, and weaknesses as well. Yeah, I mean, the teams, the team names stay the same, but the players, I think there's a lot of movement, uh, especially now. Where players from higher tiers are coming down to play at tier five with the idea of getting promoted with a club, so it's the same thing that's happening for us and it's happening across the board. I think you get the the strength of the league is is going up, um, which means the caliber of players that are coming into the league is is better. So although you know a bit about each team at the start of each season, a team can be very very different. So it's just about figuring that out again, I suppose, when you when you see them. And do you set your own kind of personal uh, aims and goals for the for the upcoming campaign as well? My goals really are just to play, to play, uh, um, to remain consistent, injury free, touch wood, and just help, yeah, contribute to the team. I think for me. And it really feels like you know Carl's made such a difference since coming in, and, and the coaches that he's had too as well. Yeah, yeah, he's he's made a real push for the women's side. I think the trust did a really good job of like maintaining the women's side when it was falling 
you know, on its knees. And then he came in and gave us that extra push and, you know, wanted to progress and not just sort of sit and maintain. So he's done a lot to develop us and push us on. And now the foundation have come in as well. And I think that will give us an extra, an extra push and the ability to, you know, raise our standards even more in line with Carl's sort of visions. So, yeah, it's been a good development over the last, I think, three seasons, is it now? You know, and there's a five-year plan, so we've got the next two seasons to, to complete the plan. And great that you've sort of built that home at uh, Birmingham, uh, Birmingham, Burnham as well. I can, yeah. You might have built a home at Birmingham. It's, just, it's not been talked about publicly. <laughs> no. Yeah, Burnham's, Burnham's good for us. I know, like, Wickham fans think it's a bit far out and I think that's one of the main things we we did a survey and we asked people you know we asked Wickham fans like why they if they would come and that was one of the main like sort of barriers I think was the distance that it was outside of Wickham but for us I think it it's the standard we get there is a lot better than when we were playing at Flackwell for example we got we've now got a stand we've got a bar so the match day experience is a lot better for those who do come out to Burnham and it does feel a lot like a home ground where when we played at Flackwell when I first started the changing rooms were sort of, uh, sort of like a temporary structure, whereas at Burnham we've you know got good good standards. So I think it is just all part of the development and getting a home ground like that where we can you know have a, a bit of a fortress is uh, is good for us. Yeah. And something else which really comes across, I was fortunate enough to go to the sponsors game at the end of last season. There's a real sort of sense of community as well. You're like you know everyone kind of sort of chips in and and is really friendly and, and welcoming as well. Yeah, it's great. I mean we have our regulars and the parents and everyone they all sit together and you can hear them you know when I watch the games back on the analysis you can hear everyone's mums and dads and all the young girls that come out and watch us and you can hear everyone shouting and it does actually make a difference and I know like the attendance might be a hundred but it it does make a big difference to us and does push us on. And something which really, st- really stood out for me as well is that, as you touched on, that young girls and supporters, they really uh, kind of admire, you know, what you do and they say things like, oh, you know, we must take what they're doing into our training and that must be really inspirational as well, that, that you know that they're kind of looking to, to, to copy what you, you all do as well. Yeah, it's really good. And, I mean, we've had teams, mascots that come down. We try and get into the, sort of the local community and, and give the girls opportunities to be mascots from the local clubs, which has gone really well for us and we had... Yeah, a number of teams in last year, and it's it's so nice to see, and they really think you're a role model, and they look at us like we're you know we are professional footballers in their eyes, and we play for Wickham Wanderers, and we're we're these athletes that they want to aspire to be like, and it is really nice for us. And like at the end of games, they they make up their own chants. They did there was a, a a chant that they made up last year. It was on Instagram and it was so funny. And then they're coming up and taking selfies with us after the game and stuff like that, and high fiving us as we run through the t- into the change rooms and stuff. And it is it's really good for us, and it's I think it's really good for them as well. It's nice, isn't it? Because I'm sure there are players that you um, and the rest of the players sort of aspire to as well, and, and really admire, like in the England team and WSL and things like that. And, and great that you've got that sort of pathway as well for the, for the youngsters to kind of think, oh, I could do that one day as well. Yeah, it's great. And now we've like now we're in with a foundation as well. We've got that pathway from the GDA all the way from I think it's under nines they start at all the way to the first team. So that connection is there, and I think it's important for the for the younger girls. You know, that's from under nines to under eighteens. I think it's important to see that pathway and that ability to be able to develop and have a realistic goal of you know what they want to achieve a lot of people will want to play in the WSL but a lot of these girls will want to play you know for their local team and for their in their local community and for Wickham Wanderers which is ideal absolutely and really great that you know people might be listening now and thinking oh my daughter would like to do that or a young girl could be listening and thinking you know I'd like to to do what she's doing one day and and great that you know there is this example that that you've kind of done it and and kind of worked your way through and are now playing for for the club yeah, and I think we've had a lot of girls have been successful that have come through the GDA and maybe it's not celebrated enough, but I think a lot of our girls who now make up the the under-18s last year, now the development squad, if they've moved up, some are still continuing with the under-18s, they have come through the GDA and there is that clear like pathway through. We've got a lot of the girls, I think, Millie, Nicole, um, Becca and all of those guys, they started you know, young. Um, Emily Strange was another one, our goalkeeper from last season. Um have all come through the GDA so it is possible and they do see that so that, yeah I think that's really important So what would your kind of message be to supporters who are especially thinking oh I, you know, I haven't been to a, a women's game before I could perhaps come down in, in the new season Do it <laughs> uh, Our games are normally at 2 o'clock on a Sunday uh, We've got links now with the men's 
and the foundation which we've been building for the last few years but tickets our season tickets are available to buy on the men's website now i say the men's website the club website now um and all of that stuff so the, the information is out there so if you do want to come down come down a great opportunity for people to, to back the team and, and you know, hopefully you'll, you'll get promotion this season. Yeah, I mean, that's always the aim, isn't it? Um, I think this year it is a, a big goal of ours. I think last year was to progress as much as we always say it is promotion. Obviously, you, you always want promotion. You go into games wanting to win. But this season, I think it is the ultimate goal. And I think anything less than that will sort of be a disappointment. And do you feel really optimistic that you know this season, perhaps more consistently, you'll be able to be playing you know, your strongest eleven and, and really get some good results and, and, and put in some good performances? Yeah, like I said, I think we've re- retained a good core group of players. We've added additions in positions we needed to. It will be sort of a same but different squad this year. I think the core players will stay the same, and then the new additions, yeah, will add add a lot of excitement and a lot of creativity going forward. Most of the players I think we've signed are more attacking players. And then, so I think, yeah, this year it, the idea is to be consistent and to get those results we need. And you're you probably reluctant to do this, and we probably shouldn't say this, but who, who in particular should we, should we be looking out for uh, this season who you think will do well? Everyone. Me. <laughs> no, no, I think um, it's, it's hard, isn't it? Because last year I think one of our most consistent players was... Uh, Maka who's gone to uni now which is my centre back partner so devastating for me but I've got Milana coming in now and she's another young like young talent and I think she will step up for that but the goal scorers aren't they they're the ones people look out for so I guess it will be yeah Jess um, Imani and yeah those guys who have come in but yeah I think those guys you know they're, they're great to watch I stand there I pass the ball to them and I can admire it as well whilst I'm on the pitch and I admire it afterwards in the analysis as well so yeah I guess um, those attacking players are always the ones people look out for aren't they no absolutely we wish you a really successful season look forward to catching up with you uh, more as the season progresses and hope you stay, stay injury free and have a, have a good one yourself thank you so much for chatting Perfect. to us thank you very much great chatting to Bobby Lynch of course is the Wickham Wanderers women's captain they're preparing for their new season in the coming weeks we'll be chatting to more of their players as well next week Emma Newbury who uh, as mentioned is uh, commencing her 10th season uh, with the club uh, manager Carl Simon will be chatting to us in the coming weeks as well and Amy Leach and Emma Cohen who have both recently resigned Resigned. <coughs> Sorry, still kept the humour aspect of the show. Uh, <laughs> also, Ashley Hart. I only apologise. Uh, who has uh, been scoring uh, some great goals of late in pre-season? Uh, Imani and new signing Jess will be chatting to us in the coming weeks as well. So we're very much looking forward to hearing more from the chair girls. And of course, we'll be continuing to back them throughout the campaign as well. And fingers crossed, they'll be able to achieve promotion this season as well. I must say uh, a big hello and well done to you if you're one of the fans uh, supporting the uh, Wickham Wanderers Supporters Trust this morning. Uh, they invited a number of fans to. Uh, do another seat cleaning session uh, following the uh, the start of this with some volunteers last month. Uh, the remainder of the 8,000 or more seats at Adams Park were uh, tackled uh, with bucket and sponge uh, by uh, volunteers from about 8 o'clock this morning down at the ground. You might have seen them on the TV uh, doing it as well as part of the EFL 72 uh, programme as well. So a big well done to you if you're involved in that. And uh, I shall certainly be, uh, when next down at Adams Park, uh, admiring your work and being very grateful to be able to sit on <laughs> Sit on a clean seat across High Wycombe and South Buckinghamshire and on your smart speaker. Play Wycombe Sound. This is Wycombe Sound. The Wycombe Wanderers Show. Thursdays from 7. Final part of the very first Wiccan Wanderer show of the new series, Series 5. And uh, just before the kickoff, earlier this week, in fact, I was fortunate to go to a media day at the new training base in Harlington. Lots of uh, work being done there. Uh, we'll hear from manager Matt Bloomfield uh, very soon as well. You might notice, if you're eagle-eared, if that's an expression, that uh, some, <laughs> some of the interviews which are done were at different places in the... Uh, in the uh, the training ground uh, for example we spoke to Jack Grimmer a little earlier on which is in the corridor you can almost smell the pasta not far from the canteen more of a visual reference uh, we'll hear from uh, Matt Bloomfield in a few moments time and also uh, Matt Butcher as well 
uh, both of which sound a bit like they were done on the, the top deck of a boat. Uh, but uh, we, <laughs> we did speak to uh, one of the new signings, uh, Dan Udo, who we, we were fortunate enough to borrow the new Wanderers TV studio for that. Uh, so that was, <laughs> that was quite quiet. But brilliant to catch up with Dan and find out how he's settling in uh, at the club. Settled in really well. Luckily, I knew a few of the boys from playing against them so many years. By the year, they were in the championship. But like knew like the, the gaffer, knew G Mac, knew Luke really well, and a lot of the other boys that like I played against, and then obviously the defenders like Taff, who we've had good battles in the years gone by, and yeah, and everyone in general has been really good with me and all the new boys and integrated us in really well, and that week in Loughborough that we had really helped us as well. Because I guess the thing is, that especially in a club with a, you know that so much is made of the culture, and it probably feel, won't feel like too long at all when, when you're new at all. No, because the gaffer drives that really well because he's he's Mr. Wickham, isn't he? And he really wants the new boys to feel part of it straight away, and that's what they've done. And like I'm sure the other new boys as well are really grateful because we just feel like we've been here. It feels like I've been here for six months already. So exciting with the, the new ownership of the club and the new training ground, obviously, and, and, and another, a new group as well that you're kind of now part of. And I guess you're really excited about what you can contribute. Yeah, definitely. It's new beginnings for myself, new beginnings for well, the club and new owners and new training ground and stuff like that. But I'm sure the club in general wants to go on the up and it's not being silly and saying we're going to win the league or we're going to do this. It's For me, it's doing better than you did the year before and making an impact as a player individually to help the team collectively. Is it nice for you as well to kind of bring something fresh to, to the group? Definitely and that's what like as a new player you want to do, you want to show what you're about and I'm sure the boys will uh, know what you're about already and the manager because they wouldn't bring you in if they didn't know what you're about but um, it's just good to show what you can do and add to the team that's already a good team. How would you describe how, how pre-season's gone generally? Um, it's been it's been tough, and um, things are looking really good. But we get to know when we start the season. And first month in, we'll know how pre-season's gone. And like um, the gaffer and the coaching staff have been really good with all the details and they've, what they've given us to do. So then now it's down to us, the players, to implement it. Must be really exciting for you as well. Looking forward to making your debut. Yeah, definitely, and it's, um, well, home is Shropshire now for me, isn't it? And it's, um, being a former Shrewsbury player, Wrexham is a game against our rivals, basically, so it would be good for me to make my Wickham debut there, and if I can get a goal on my debut, it would be brilliant. And such a challenging start, but I guess that's what you relish as a player, to, to take on teams who are you know, new to the division. Definitely, you, um, it's a challenging start the whole month and the games but what game in League One isn't challenging do you mean you can um, people will be writing off teams like Crawley and stuff but when you play them it'll be a tough game people will be backing teams like Birmingham but at the end of the day it's League One football it took Ipswich so long to get out and other teams like Derby and stuff like that so Listen, let League One football show what it's about. Great to hear from uh, Dan and also looking forward to uh, seeing his name on the score sheet plenty this season as well. Uh, someone who arrived in January is Matt Butcher and uh, he, as you say, uh, as you can imagine, is looking forward to uh, building on what was achieved at the back end of last season but uh, looking forward to the challenge of a tough start at Wrexham. We're going to have to compete against these teams. They're obviously coming down some, some massive clubs in the league now um, which is obviously going to be a, a new challenge for us um, but we can only concentrate what we've got in the building and, 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 and build on confidence of last season of beating them teams and competing against the likes of, uh, of them so-called bigger teams so I think we're confident with what, what we've got inside and um, we're, hopefully we can take that kind of positivity and um, keep the ball falling from the end of last season And it's a real feeling of, uh, amongst the club at the moment of excitement due to you know, the new ownership and the new training ground and the new faces in and going into a new campaign especially as you say as we, the way you ended the last one Yeah of course I think that probably helps the new lads kind of settle in because it's new for everyone so we're all kind of getting to grips with things um, we've been here obviously a, a good amount of time now so that kind of newness has kind of gradually gone away a little bit and we've been able to focus on you know the most important things like the the time on the grass and the time training to prepare us for the season um, but like any pre-season everyone's looking forward to the first first game and then beyond that the first couple of games um, pre-season is great and we've got exactly what we need out of it so um, 
the group is excited to get, into that, get, get stuck into the fixtures now. And a real feeling of kind of building on what was achieved the second half of last season as well. Yeah, definitely. I think um, that's something we spoke about already. Um, the form we were in last season, we don't want to go away from that. We want to keep that momentum and keep that feeling while it is high. And that can be massive in any season. You've, you've seen teams go on a bit of a streak. And if we can do that at the start, it can obviously put you in a stronger position uh, for, the, for the middle and latter part of the season. You mentioned that the start that you've got, I guess as players you must really relish that challenge there as well. Yeah, yeah, it's obviously a tough start um, on paper. Um, we don't know 100% exactly what these teams are going to be like in this league, so it's not about them for us, it's about you know what we can do and how we can put our stamp on it, like we did last season. And if we do that, obviously I think we can go kind of to any team and, and, and be really competitive. And what are the main kind of strengths that you'll take into this season from, from what was achieved last season and what you can look forward to the most? Um, just being together I think that was one of the reasons why I signed here um, every time I've played against them they've, they seem like a group that's together and that's not disappointed um, for all of the staff through the, through the players the, the, the feeling that you have day to day uh, that's what I enjoy as a footballer being together and achieving something so hopefully we can have a positive season and, um, and, and do that together I'm really looking forward to contributing yourself as well yeah 100% um, I felt like I added to the group last year chipped him with a couple of important goals here and there which was nice um, so yeah I'd love to continue that uh, that form and score a couple more great chat to uh, Matt Butcher the midfielder of course <laughs> didn't think it was that windy on Tuesday uh, good to hear the sprinkler was working as well uh, and as we heard earlier in the show uh, from Phil uh, that uh, Matt Bloomfield as you can imagine uh, very pleased with how pre-season's gone it has been uh, a huge amount of work that's gone into it the players the application and the, the dedication to their, uh, their craft has been fantastic um, you know we couldn't have asked any more from them we've spent a lot of hours on the training ground in the meeting room and you know just making sure that we can be as good as we can and you know I'd like to thank them for their efforts so far because they've, they've been absolutely fantastic so and we've been pleased how it's gone and we, we hope we can take that into the league season and are there real learnings from last season that you can take into this new campaign as well yeah of course you know we're always evolving always trying to learn always trying to improve absolutely we were really pleased with the work that we did throughout the season it obviously took a little while for us to really you know kick into gear but um, to finish the season in the way that we did with that little bit of momentum um, I hope we really really hope that we can take that into the new season and we were speaking to Jack a short time ago and he was saying in a way it's a shame that the season finished when it did oh absolutely yeah we were in full stride weren't we we were, um, we were playing some really good football we were um, evolving in the style that we want to, to play in we were, we were winning matches Matches. We had a, a really competitive squad where we were able to make five, six, seven changes per game and still, you know, still have the look of the Wickham team that we want to be. So we were in a really good spot. It was a, it was a real shame that the season ended when it did, but you know, it's football and, and we have to make sure we're ready to go again. This last season's done, uh, and we have to be ready to go on Saturday. Are you really pleased with the signings that you made and how they've integrated and, and looking forward to seeing what they can offer? Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, there was so much hard work that goes into making any sign, and you know, um, Alex Hartridge is someone that I've admired, and you know, as coaching staff, we've admired from a far for a while down in Exeter Dan Harvey I've always liked him at, at Milton Keynes Tariq Bakinson has all the tools to be a real real top midfield player in this division um, you know Dan Udo has proven at the level and has scored goals in up at Shrewsbury with you know Nathan Bishop someone who, who Harry has known for a long time we've made some real real good signings uh, I apologise if I've left anyone out of that but just off the top of my head um, yeah we, we, we worked tirelessly to get these boys in and, and we're really pleased with what we've done you're looking to further strengthen as well yeah absolutely yeah I mean I think with the, with the Euros there's obviously a lot of Premier League clubs are keeping a lot of their young players in so we'll be looking to try and get a couple of loans in if we can um, yeah we're always looking to strengthen it's a continual evolution so working closely with Dan with those and, and we hope that we can uh, bring one or two in before the end of the window and what were your thoughts when the, the fixtures came out I guess a double-edged sword really really challenging start yeah, huge. Uh, a fantastic challenge for us. Something to be really excited about. You know, uh, Wrexham and Birmingham, everyone expects both teams to get promoted out of the division this year. Um, so, you know, the expectation is on those clubs. You know, the money they're spending, the, the recruitment that they've gone and done, the, the size of the clubs and the money that, that's being spent, um, you know, obviously indicates that they're going to be right at the top of the division. So um, two really, really good challenges for us and ones we're relishing. And injuries was a real issue for you last season. Is that something you can mitigate against or is it just kind of part of the game, really? If pre-seasons anything's go by, hopefully we'll be in for a better bit of better, better luck this year. Um, we've been managed to keep you know, the majority of the group fit throughout pre-seasons. So we hope that that continues. But obviously injuries are part and parcel of the game. It's contact sport. We try and uh, mitigate the uh, you know the muscle injuries as much as we possibly can. They played a huge part in our form pre-Christmas, and we were a lot more fortunate with that you know post-Christmas and had a squad that could cope with it. So it's two things: one, having a squad that can cope with the demands of the amount of games we've got to play, and and secondly, being as as clever as we can with um, with our training and, and learning as we go along. But yeah, let's let's hope that we can have a uh, keep all our big players fit and, and we can have a good season. 
And does it feel a really exciting time with the, the new ownership, the new training ground, the new arrivals, and obviously the new season as well? Yeah, of course. You know, um, you know, the, the new owner has uh, incredible plans for our football club, which is, is thoroughly you know, exciting for all of our supporters. You know, the new, new uh, training pitch, the new training ground, the academy that's on its way, and, and all the other exciting things that um, are going to give this club a really exciting future. You know, so for Wickham Wanderers, it's a, a really exciting time. Uh, and for me, it's about making sure I can do the best job I, I possibly can to, to play into that future. And just finally, what were your message to supporters going into this, this new start? Obviously, a, a different kickoff time on a Saturday as well. Yeah, I think it's just um, thank you for their support last year. I really hope that we can be a team that they can be proud of. You know, we're we're um, we're in a, in, a, in a league this year with money being spent that I've never never known. The amount of big clubs that are just proving to in the recruitment market to, to, to proving their power but our supporters know what we stand for they know what we're about they know how we like to conduct ourselves and how we how we want to be moving forward and I, I really really hope we can be a team that they can be proud of this season Real pleasure chatting to Matt Bloomfield we'll be hearing from more from him throughout the season as well kick off on Saturdays at 5.30 away at Wrexham you'll have the whole game live here on Wickham Sound and on Wanderers TV Tuesday night 7.45 in the League Cup against Northampton uh, then next Saturday uh, against Birmingham and then the uh, Football League Trophy against AFC Wimbledon the following Tuesday as well.